Good morning, brethren. What are we to endure? Are you enjoying this winter cold? Or are we just enduring it? Yes, we endure the winter cold and snow, and we endure winter weather while looking forward to the warm spring. <clears throat> and we know warm weather will come just as spring follows winter. It will come. But it's a long ways off for now. In the meantime, what are we doing to endure this life as Christians? What does the Bible say about enduring while living as a Christian today? In this fast-paced world that wants pain-free everything, no one's no one in the world wants to endure any hardships from the newest COVID-19 virus that's starting around. If they do, they want to endure totally without pain. As most of you know, Christ says in Matthew 24, verse 13, He that shall endure the same shall be saved. Let's start there. That's a good place to start. And let's back up to verse 10. And then shall many be offended. And that's sure happening today. And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. Boy, ain't that happening today. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. There it is. So, in my sermonette today, I believe the Bible talks about enduring all types of things as a Christian, but also the benefits of enduring to the end. Just like we are to endure the cold weather, the cold wind, the frigid cold winter time, we Christians have to endure many, many difficult things in life. But remember, just like spring follows wintertime, the joy of salvation follows us as Christians to the end. In my study of the Bible, I have found many things the Bible says about endurance. I've picked three out today just to go over them with you to emphasize this point. Number one, persecution because of your Christian beliefs. Number two, tribulation because of living a Christian life. Number three, affliction from evildoers because we are Christians. I'm sure you could find many things in the Bible it says a Christian may have to endure from our corrupt society we live in. In many ways, the Bible shows Christians are expected to endure these difficulties. And of course, we do it with the help of God, the help of the ministry, the help of brethren, fasting and praying and studying our Bible. This is how we live these stressful end times. Of course, our own fasting, prayer, and Bible study will go a long way toward helping us to understand what to do during these difficult times that we must endure. All the difficulties I have listed, <clears throat> I want to discuss a little bit because we know in this corrupt society that we live in, we're expected to endure. First, a true Bible Christian can be expected to be persecuted for their beliefs sometime in their life. I have 
many of you have, you know what I mean. The reason is because we follow Christ, his word and his way of life. And Christ was persecuted, yet he did not seek it, nor should we. Let's turn to John 15, 20. John 15, 20 illustrates that. Remember the word I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And I'll stop there. That's the main point I want to make from that verse. <clears throat> so they persecuted Christ even to death. Now, the word persecute in the original Greek means to run after or pursue with intention to do harm. This definition shows action. It's an active persecution in hot pursuit. Today, only in foreign countries where Islam and communism is do they still have this extreme persecution being carried out today? And we saw that in the Hamas attack on Israel on October 8th. So it still exists out there. Much of the persecution of the Western world is more the type of excommunication from church, from family, from school or community. Also in some severe, case, severe cases, they could take you to court, but that's pretty rare for not following their things. And I say that because my older sisters, when they were in the church, took their children out of school during the feast time. Some of you've done that, and you know what that entails. And back in those days, your children not showing up to school was a law violation. And so they had to deal with that back in those days. And that could end up in court. That's why I'm mentioning that. And sure, there's many, many other examples. So what are we to do when we are persecuted? Well, Paul shows us 1 Corinthians 4, 12. 1 Corinthians 4, 12. Well, let's start in 11. Even to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are <clears throat> naked, are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. And in my Bible, it's got a tag on suffer, and if you go down and look, it says endure. We endure it. That's what Paul says. Paul shows us also in Romans 8, 35, 39, we endure it because, and I won't go there. You can read that. That's Romans 8, chapter 8, that is, 35 through 39. We endure it because we are more than conquerors. Having the love of God, nothing will separate us from God and Christ and the joy of salvation he has waiting for us. The second difficulty I mentioned is tribulation. And Christ talked about that, and I talked about it when I was last speaking up here. In this world, in John 16, 33, in this world we shall have tribulation. And he said, but I have endured the world. And he said that uh, 
be of good cheer, I have endured the world. And that's what we're to do. Also, Paul shows in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 3 through 4, and we won't go there, but you can note that and check back later, that God patiently and faithfully will help us endure these tribulations and persecutions. And Christ encourages us, as I said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and one day we will too. It lives in us, each one of us, as Scripture says. So, too, can we overcome the world. And yes, we can endure to the end. <clears throat> so, if we keep our eyes on that glory God has for us. In Paul's words, enduring tribulation, and that will never blot out the joy of salvation for each one of us. Christians can expect to endure affliction as a very personal affliction in their life. In 2 Timothy verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 5, Paul admonishes Timothy to, quote, watch you in all things endure affliction. The original Hebrew word for afflict means to oppress, to humble by causing helplessness, and severe deep distress. We know Jesus Christ was prophesied to be afflicted by the Jews for our sins based on Isaiah chapter 53. We can read of his, quote, passion, that's his capture, his trial, his beatings, and his humiliation in the New Testament that caused Christ helplessness and severe distress, meaning affliction. It is recorded in the four Gospels, in the New Testament, the actual afflictions of Christ, and they happened exactly as they were prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 and other places. And remember, Christ endured these great afflictions without sin, even until his death. Because of this, God resurrected him into glory. Like Christ, we are in many times in this Christian world afflicted. That is, we are humiliated into helplessness and severe distress by afflictions brought on to us by the world. But we know by the promises in God's word, we can be like Christ. For as Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, and you note that down, it says, He, that is Paul, rejoiced in his sufferings, that's his afflictions, for Christ's sake, knowing the outcome, as the Scripture says, the joy of eternal salvation at the resurrection. So, with Christ our example, who suffered wrongfully, he endured it. He is our example, even if it is hard for us to do it, that is to endure like Christ did. Yes, I know, not returning threats for threats and violence for violence. It's hard to be like Christ today. But finally, brethren, with all these difficulties, I have found most Christians can endure in this life. In each case, the Bible shows we can overcome each one of these, even as Christ Jesus did it. He did it with God's help, praying and fasting, and so can we. Why does God help us? Because God loves us cares for us, and he promises to help us 
in times of need. Just as we endure the cold winter, looking forward to the coming warmth of spring, we are encouraged by the hope of Christ's promises in Matthew 24, 13. He that shall endure the same shall be saved.